In this video, number nine, we're going to discuss and demonstrate the mechanics and techniques you can use to perform the actual bailout, both out of window as well as off a roof. In video eight, we discuss the three main anchoring options that you can use to secure your system. Now the technique and methods that you use to perform the bailout can correlate directly with the anchoring method that you use. In video number eight, we talked about the first anchoring option as being attaching to a substantial object. Now one of the reasons I like that is it's pretty much set it and forget it. If you chose an appropriate anchor, something that's going to easily support your body weight and you secure it properly, you're not going to have to worry about it prevailing. That on top of the fact that the F4 is a self-breaking DCD, I, I don't have to hold on to anything. I can literally launch myself out the window hands-free in a worst case scenario if the room just instantaneously lights up on me. Now that is not something that we recommend doing, but it's something that you may have to do. And one situation where you're going to have to do it is if you are presented with a very narrow window. In that case, you're going to have to put your arms in a superman position to low profile to be able to squeeze through that opening. You're not going to be able to use a hand and a leg, which we're going to talk about and emphasize next, to do a control rollout or use a hand to hold a tool or your hook in place. You're going to need both hands in front of you. So let's take a closer look at that technique. As you make your approach to the window, make sure that you're not twisted up in the rope and that you got good DCD clearance. One of the problems that you may experience when performing the Superman technique is getting stuck in an inverted position. You're obviously going to have to revert back into an upright position in order to complete your descent. If you've anchored off the left side, you're going to twist and turn to your left and reach up for the rope. If you've anchored off the right side when you start your bail, you'll twist in this direction. Since I anchored off the left side, I'm going to twist to my left and I'm going to reach up for the system carabiner. Not the release lever of the F4, but the system carabiner. Grab it and pull yourself up as you drop your legs beneath you. Once you're upright, you can secure a brake hand, grab the release lever of the F4, and continue with your descent. When we talk about proper DCD clearance, refer to a technique called punching out. And what that involves is using your brake hand and rope, grabbing it, lifting the DCD up and over the sill. The reason we call it punching out is your hands in the shape of a fist and as you lift the DCD up and over, you're basically creating a punching movement. We talk about six inches of clearance, but I want at least four minimum. The reason you do that is you never want to use your body to drag your DC out over the sill. It's pretty much a cardinal sin because there's just too great of a potential of the DCD, especially the F4, getting hung up on the windowsill itself. Now when you look at the release lever of the F4, it has that D shape. If I use my body to drag the device over, there's a strong potential that the release lever could capture the windowsill, especially if it's a projected sill plate, and then it could get hung up just like the flash rope. Punching out by lifting up and over minimizes or pretty much eliminates that likelihood of that happening. One thing you never want to do is grab the rope or put your hand on the inside of the rope as you're bailing off. You want to keep your hand to the outside. So a close up on this, I don't want my hand here, I don't want to grab the rope. Both of those positions, once I load my system, can cause me to get my hand caught underneath the roll, and it's going to be extremely painful and next to impossible to release yourself. As you draw the DC upwards, you punch out, then your hand goes to that wall to control your exit. Besides your hand position, you also need to think about your leg position because you're going to use both to perform that control roll up. So if I'm keeping my left hand in place, I'm going to also want to hook my left leg. So as I punch out with my right hand, my right leg's gonna follow suit. With your right arm out first, you're gonna bend your knee and pull your right leg out next. That allows you to drop the left leg into the corner. You can start to pull this leg out as you twist back upright. As I'm starting my rollout, I'm gonna punch out again. As I do that, I wanna keep my hand close to the F4 as I draw it up and over the sill when I'm punching out. 
don't want to have your hand way back here. If you do that, you'll notice I gotta extend my arm almost all the way out before the DCD starts to get drawn out over the sill. Starting here makes that punch out and that DCD clearance a lot more efficient. Once I get here though, as I'm placing my left hand, I'm gonna extend my right hand out almost into that full break hand position. That will help me to revert into the upright position but not lose contact with the break end of the rope. So out I come, my head's gonna to go toward the side my anchor is, is positioned. So I did that left side tool wall, my, my hand and head are gonna go in that direction. That's gonna give me more clearance to pull my leg out. I got an arm and leg hook. I'm gonna bring my right knee up. As I turn this way, I start to bring my head up. As I bring my head up, you notice how my left leg is starting to come out now. I pivot off. That right knee, bring the left knee down. I'm right here in the break hand position. My left hand immediately goes to the DCD and I can start my descent. The third anchoring technique we talked about, and this was your last resort, was using the flash hook to load your system off of. Now, regardless of whether you're using the flash or you're using the tool in the corner of the window opening to anchor your system off of, you have to perform a procedure that we like to call proper friction and tension control. And what that means is you need to maintain proper friction or contact with the surface that you're applying the hook or tool to, and you need to maintain tension from that friction or contact point until your body weight loads the system. At that point, then I can let go with my hand. And that's where that, that controlled rollout really pays its dividends. I'm using my hand on the inside, my leg on the inside to control the explosiveness, the smoothness of that rollout. As I'm making my approach, drawing the DC out with that, that punch out technique. In this case, I'm going to use the flat method for placing the hook. As I place it on the silk plate, this is always a good thing to do. Give it a hit to help set that point to drive it into the frame of the window or the drywall, sheet rock, lap, and plaster. I start with that cupping action. And as soon as my body starts to clear, my hand slides down where my thumb is in line with the spine and my index finger is on the flange of the hitching slot. Left hand hooks, left leg hooks. I start to bring my head off, my leg falls up, I drop into that upright position and I can go to my descent. Once you feel comfortable and get proficient, anchoring from the left side, whether it's with the flash or your tool, you've got to start becoming proficient with placing the flash or your tool on the right. If we have a single window and multiple firefighters are bailing out of it, if I'm attaching to a substantial object or I'm using a tool in the wall technique, we're going we're gonna to secure those anchors simultaneously, but we're still going to have to go out one after the other. If I can't secure to a substantial object or perform the tool in the wall technique on opposite sides, we're going to be placing our, our anchors on on the left side, that's our normal orientation. If I'm using the flash, first firefighter goes out, places it, the second firefighter is just going to put their hook right on top of the first one, and the third right on top of the second, etc. And we're going to go out sequentially, one after the other. If I'm fortunate enough and we have two windows side by side, one firefighter is going to anchor off the left side of the left window, and another firefighter is going to anchor off the right side of the right window. The advantage that this provides is we can bail out simultaneously. There's no delay. So if conditions are going south really quickly, we're anchoring simultaneously and bailing out simultaneously. However, if I stick with that normal placement and I go off the left side, Josh goes off the left side, as we roll out together, when he's doing that control rollout and he's hooking his or using his left hand and hooking his left leg, his left leg can swing up, hit me in the hand, and knock my hook out of position as I'm rolling out. That's why you have to be comfortable and fluid and proficient securing your hook or your tool on both sides of the window. So in this scenario, we got to go out together simultaneously. The conditions are really bad. Josh has his hook placed on the left. I'm going to come around on the right, and I'm going to place my hook on the right side. Now our hooks are completely away from each other, and there's no way for our legs to, to kick them out of position. The only thing that might happen is we just kick each other's legs, and that's not a big deal. That's why you want to be proficient both sides. If you remember in some of the previous videos, I talked about the option for going with an independent or non-pre-attached system for going with one that's integrated pre-attached. Right now I have the Cobra belt on with the Tech Extension lanyard from Sterling. 
the pre-attached system, as I mentioned, is always going to be your best setup if it's going to work because you don't have to worry about facilitating any hookups. It's just pull out the hook, you're pre-attached, you're ready to bail out. The problem that we have, or potentially have, with some of our personnel is going to be the length of this setup now when you're going pre-attached. Remember, we have a 9-inch lanyard. We need that to get to the pocket. If you look at the length of the F4, the basic placement of the flash, if this hook gets out of your reach when you load the system, so I have it fully extended off the Cobra belt now, and it's almost at the end of my reach. If it gets outside that reach, the hook ends up like here, and I can't hold it in position. I can't perform that friction and tension control that we talked about and get my body weight to load the system and hold the hook in place. This pre-attached setup that we have as an option for you isn't going to work in a worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario is loading your system off the hook. If I can't hold it in place, then you're going to have to probably look at going with an independent or non-pre-attached setup. So one of the things that I can do to compensate for that clearance is, again, if you remember, we talked about the top of the flash to the top of the F4 being about an inch. But that may be too much for certain window sills. So to maintain that proper friction and tension control, you make a quick judgment call and you shorten up that distance. So the DCD will still clear the sill, but the hook now is closer to your body to maintain that proper friction and tension control. The difference between left and right is now I hold the hook in my right, my right hand, I grab the rope, coming off the back side of the F4, bring it around to my left. Come up to the window, all these mechanics and steps are exactly the same. Lay it flat, hit it, set the hook. I'm going to start with that cupping of the hook. I'm going to punch out with my left hand. Right leg hooks. Right hand still holding the hook in place until I start to revert. I feel the system load. Once my body weight's on the hook, I can let go. So now we're going to demonstrate the potential problem of the system getting out of your reach. Again, this is pretty close to the normal setup. If you don't draw or close up this proximity from the base of the flash to the top of your F4, and this extension lanyard is too long, as well as the hardware, and gets out of your reach, it's potentially very problematic, if, if not a fatal error. Placement, punch out, extend. Now, as I'm coming out, right now, the hook's starting to get out of my reach before I load it. Right now, it's literally at the end of my reach. If I was unable to hold it, my hands here now, that hook could pop out and then I'm going to be falling that quick. It's instantaneous, unrecoverable. The only thing that's going to stop you is meeting the pavement. It's essential that you close up that gap. As long as it still provides DCD clearance, the system may still work for you being pre-attached. But if it doesn't, even when you close up the gap, an independent or integrated pre-attached system with this setup won't work. Now we're getting into the techniques and mechanics for bailing off a pitch rub. Again, just as a review of this scenario, you would employ this tactic when your primary access ladder to the roof is involved in fire. So you're on the whatever side you are, you go to access your, your ground ladder and fire's blowing out a window and it's enveloping the ladder. The roof is starting to get compromised, you can't wait for repositioning. Let's say you don't have the stick, an aerial or a bucket to the roof as your secondary means of egress, you go to the peak, helicopter your ladder or if you're fortunate enough to have roof hooks on both sides of the ladder we're just going to lift up and down the slider along the ladder down the adjacent side of the roof and we're going to secure to it and bail off again if a secondary means of egress hasn't been established there. If the roof is starting to go at that point seconds count. We're just going to place the hook on a rung and exit off. If we got multiple firefighters one places it on the right side one places on the left and we exit off opposite sides of the ladder. Okay, the third firefighter can choose whatever side they want. It's typically going to be you want to get as low to the eave as possible. I usually tell firefighters so you have enough space to work off and still keep a foot on a ladder rung. We're going to hook into the third and fourth rungs from the base of the ladder. If I have time, you want to actually secure a rounder rung just like you do with the substantial object. Remember, we're going to open this up. I'm going to draw a rope out, grab the hook around, through the hitching slot, around the point, slide to the side, you're going to exit off. Now, on a lower level roof, I'm going to say like a 5, 12, 6, 12, 
there's a possibility if you lean too far back, in other words, if I stay more upright like this, as I'm leaning back, I can start to lift the ladder up and pinion it or pivot it off the roof. So on a lower pitch roof, you want to stay low. You want your torso kept low to the roof deck. On a steeper pitch, 8, 10, or 12, 12, you don't have to worry about that. As I work my way down, I'm staying low. As you see, if I start to lean up, see how I start to lift the hook or the ladder up? So I want to stay low and I actually kind of keep an elbow down. And when I'm coming up, when I'm coming up this side, I'm going to actually, my hand can kind of stay here to actually kind of keep the, the ladder down. You have to be comfortable rotating off with your left leg first as well as your right, right leg. Here's the tricky part. You're going to see this on a reverse angle. You've got to make sure that your DCD is going to clear the gutter and roof edge. I'm using my leg here to kind of keep that elevated, okay? Until I can clear it and then pull off the edge. I want to talk about the base and ladders real quick. If your primary roof ladder, the one that you're going to exit off of, terminates shy of the edge or it goes right to the edge and doesn't go over the edge, over the gutter and E line, terminates right there, you can take your system and go right off of it. Your system will actually hold the ladder flat and keep it on the deck. However, if your ladder projects off over the edge of the E line in the gutter, you don't want to keep your rope centered because as it goes over the rung, it's creating weight on the ladder that can start to lift it up. And that's why you take your systems off the right or left side. You only have to do that when the ladder extends over the edge. If I'm exiting out the ladder, I want to secure my tool. So I'm going to carry it and then both deck. Now I'm going to show you not going off the side, but going right off the center of the ladder. Same orientation, I'm dropping my right leg down first. Here's the thing. Get that leg that you're dropping down, especially if you've got a really big projection of the roof line. You want to get this leg as high up on that bearing wall as possible. Get a hand on the F4. Extend that leg out so that when you come over the edge, you got good clearance now. Once you're in control, come back to release, release lever and go to your hotel. Now that we talked about the mechanics and techniques for exiting off a roof ladder, even if your roof ladder is in place, you still have the option of securing to the roof deck. Maybe in extreme situations, you don't have access to it. Either way, you have the option of breaching the roof deck. So you figure you're typically going to have a picket axe with you or a pig, you need something with a spike on it. Your first breach, you guys can come through, breach a hole, enlarge it, twist and torque the tool, give yourself enough space to place the point of the flash. And then you want to get rid of your tool, so you're going to do a second breach to secure your, your axe and your deck so it's not falling off and hitting any of the brothers and sisters below. Place the hook into the breach, grab the leaf lever, and work your way down to the edge. Now you should do this as close to the roof edge as possible, so if you look at some of our Two and a half story duplexes on the east side of town, or like a Queen Anne, and depending on if it's on an exposed level, or exposed basement, you could use 30 feet easy to get to the uh, to the ground. So you don't want to go all the way up 20 feet at the bridge board, use 20 feet up, and now you're not going to reach the ground with 40 foot systems. This time I'm going to drop my left leg down, and again, what I want to really reinforce, this is a, this is more of a worst case scenario. 12 12 pitch, you're going to have a very small soffit typically. On ranches, you can have a two foot E line or a gap from the edge of the roof to the bearing wall. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. If you remembered it on your side, like that's important. I'm going to drop my left leg down first now. And as you see, you got that, if you can zoom in on this, what I mean, I'm trying to get that left leg up as high underneath the soffit on that bearing wall as possible. Then, as I'm coming off, I'm extending that leg to make sure that my DCD clears the sill. If it doesn't, if it hangs up like this, this is what I want to show you. DCD hangs up like this, you're going to have to try to release this lever. Now if it reverts like this, that roof deck is going to keep it in the open position, so it's really important that you have a break hand. If it's up like this, you've got to be able to kind of rotate it to get your hand on it to free it up. Anytime you're losing control of your descent, let go of the release lever and you're automatically locked off. But always maintain a break hand in case the device would fail or slip.